exactly. I think there's there's three challenges uh, or three considerations. Uh, one is uh, security. Uh, the second is architecture, and the third is uh, the business model itself around cloud computing. Uh, taking them one by one. So security. Uh, you know, I think the challenge is. Uh, you know, the, the, there's the perception that the cloud isn't secure, and uh, I, I say it is secure. In fact, uh, you know, the government and vendors are both accountable for making sure. And from a from a government perspective, uh, the FedRAMP program uh, that's been announced and, and short, shortly to be uh, uh, public uh, policy or guidance uh, here in the next several uh, weeks is the first step forward. And from a from a, a vendor accountability, you know, vendors should be building. Uh, they're secure clouds uh, at the FISMA moderate level, not at the low level. So in the past, uh, uh, low seemed to be the starting point. I would challenge and say, you could always go backwards to low if your security requirement is low today. Uh, but start at the moderate. Uh, you get that extra layer of security, the extra guidance and the monitoring and everything that FedRAMP is all about, uh, even if you're at the low. Because uh, you never know uh, a year from now if the a security requirement for your organization uh, or agency is going to get to the moderate level. Uh, around architecture, uh, uh, you know, there's the multi-tenant architecture. So there's there's uh, there's real cloud architecture, and then there's what I call cloud pretenders, uh, which is just ASP model, uh, and they're now calling it cloud. I, I think uh, from an architectural standpoint, to get the true advantages uh, of the cloud is is all around uh, having a true multi-tenant architecture. And so the challenge. Uh, around the architecture with cloud providers is uh, a lot of cloud vendors kind of flip this Frankenstein switch and everybody upgrades at once, right? And so, uh, well, the ATOs and the, the authority operates and then DOD die cap doesn't allow for that, right? You can't just upgrade because your, your certification and accreditation, your authority operate breaks. So as, as uh, cloud uh, computing uh, becomes more mainstream and, and the government agencies are looking to select a cloud provider I would suggest that they need to look for a vendor that provides multi-tenancy and multi-version. And when I mean multi-version, uh, uh, the vendor given the cloud, or the, I'm sorry, the agency, the ability to upgrade when they want to, right? To be able to plan and test and do all the things that the authority to operate and uh, FedRAMP require. And then the last thing was around the business model. I think enterprise-wide licensing is dead. Uh, you know, I discussed on the panel about uh, you know, IT side, the security side, the compliance side of cloud has been delivered. I mean, I think there's, there's no argument that the cloud is here uh, uh, and, and that model has shifted. But there's also a business side that hasn't shifted uh, and, and it's around uh, licensing, right? So, for example, uh, agencies come to us all the time and say, we want an enterprise-wide license. I'm saying, well, why do you want an enterprise-wide license? Oh, because we're going to get the best value. Uh, and, and, you know, my, my thing back is historically, you know, the, the government has been trained to, you know, want to buy five years worth of seats. But it's more of a, uh, a predictive model. I mean, you can't predict what's going to happen two years, let alone a five-year enterprise-wide license. And even if you get a discount, right, maybe it's 50% off the licenses if you buy, you know, everything you need between now and the next five years up front. Uh, but in year two or year three, if you never used half the licenses, the, the discount is irrelevant. Coupled with, you know, when you look at uh, the NIST definition of cloud computing, it's about uh, pay for only what you use. And so you don't get that with an enterprise-wide license. And so uh, we advocate a model that's more about, uh, let's look at 12 months. And if the, if the implementation takes three of the 12, you shouldn't buy any licenses for the first three months. And then uh, you should also uh, be able to pull. So if uh, in month four, when you actually do start using and buying licenses, uh, you only use half of what you uh, license, they should roll over, right? And so, and then at the end of the first year, if uh, you're only using half of what you thought, you should be able to tune that license down uh, without any penalty. There's many success stories in the cloud, and uh, you know, we've got customers from Social Security Administration who's been using the cloud for seven years. Uh, to manage uh, web self-service or citizen experience on the web uh, where you go to the Social Security Administration's website and you could get any answer uh, to any question uh, answered yourself rather than having to get uh, routed to a contact center agent. And so there's, there's cost savings associated with that self-service mechanism rather than Social Security having to put in place thousands of agents and, and train them and retain them, uh, allowing citizens to serve themselves right on the web.
There's also the benefit as citizens, we all interact with the, the Googles of the world, uh, the Amazon.coms, we uh, interact with Zappos, right, where we go to the website and we buy something and, and, and if we have a problem and we need to find something, we're used to solving that problem ourselves. Uh, you've got customers uh, uh, that we have like the Air Force who is uh, consolidating all their data centers uh, you know, across the Air Force personnel uh, command. They're centralizing this on a cloud platform. Uh, so they've got savings around uh, the consolidation of it, but also uh, they get the ability to get software faster and, 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 and technology uh, today is advancing quickly, right? So where uh, historically uh, it took three or four or five years for, for an application to get upgraded in the military, uh, today the, the military with the cloud could upgrade every three to six months uh, as, as that new technology becomes available. I see more and more uh, the future is now, where uh, a year ago I was meeting with uh, various government customers and the question is, could we go to the cloud? Is it secure enough? Uh, today I'm getting the, qu uh, the question is, uh, Kevin, how fast can we go there, right? It's when can we go there? It's, it's not about if, it's more about you know, when is the right time. I think that uh, FedRAMP itself is a great uh, step forward for the federal government and a year from now in the future, uh, that'll be the standard and the norm, and, and, and then the perception that the cloud computing uh, environment is not uh, uh, the place for a lot of these government app applications will go away. It'll be more like you know water or uh, electric, you know, to us where we just turn on the faucet and we don't we don't we trust that the water's going to come out.